I mean, think about it. There's um, every single day, there are billions of people utilizing social media and we all utilize it for different things. And, you know, some people scroll through their newsfeed every single day and they're liking and commenting on pictures of friends and family. And, you know, why not target them where they are? So on the next slide, please. Um, think today we're going to focus specifically on Facebook and Instagram, but there are other networks out there. There's Snapchat, there's TikTok, there's Pinterest, there's LinkedIn. There are just a, a bunch of networks. But what we've found with a lot of our clients is that a lot of people really do use Instagram and Facebook. And it's, it's, there's two networks, but you probably have some target audiences on there. So, um, you know, every single day there's almost 1.79 billion active users on Facebook and there's over a billion active accounts on Instagram every month. So there's a lot of people there to target. And when they're just scrolling through their newsfeed, interacting with other people, that's when you can really, you know, capture their attention and provide some value. Next slide. So as I mentioned, we're all scrolling through our news feeds every single day, liking, sharing, commenting, doing whatever it is we need to do. And this is a good example of how integrated um, organic and ad content really are. On the left, you'll see that we have some organic content, which is this post is by a company called London Littles and they make rain boots and you know all different types of products and experiences for younger kids. And you know they're providing some tips there. It's a happy family, it's really engaging. And you know you can like it, you can comment, you can share. But then if you look at the one on the right, it looks very similar. You almost not be able to tell the difference except it has a little tiny sponsored message at the you know, above London Littles and then at the bottom right, you can see that there's a shop now button. So, you know, from, from just a little bit of a difference, you know, it, it still looks like organic content. You can still provide value and it's just a great way to really capture your audience's attention um, and make sure that, that that hard work and and the time that you put into a post actually gets seen by your target audience. Next. So ads today. An ad today is, like I said, it looks like organic content almost, but it, it, you can target your audience. You can select a variety of different options on Facebook and Instagram to really hone in on that audience that you're trying to reach. The ads, you can provide some real value. You can provide, you know, you're not just interrupting someone who's not relevant to you. You can really kind of give them something that they're looking for. And also it's just, it's very fluid with everything that you're doing. And it's not, you know, something that's intrusive to, to someone's everyday behavior. Next. Okay, so how can you do this? The biggest thing that we need to do, and we'll talk more about this um, later in the presentation, is you really need to know who you're talking to. You know, who is this person? Are they, what are they doing every day? Do they have a job? Are they sitting at home? Are they tech savvy? Do they use their phones? Do they use Facebook to connect with people? Or do they just kind of scroll through and not really engage much? You need to understand their process. Um, what can you do to understand, you know, where are they in their buyer's journey? The more you understand that, the better you can align your messages to what they're doing. And, you know, once you know who, who you're targeting and what their buyer's journey kind of looks like, you need to create a strategy so that you can put a plan in place to measure your performance. So next, Brad's gonna talk about how to build a winning campaign. So there's some things that we've learned over the years, um, some questions that, that we always ask kind of when we start working with a client um, that, that we're gonna let you guys know about um, because there's some basic foundational items that you really just kind of need to be aware of to even know whether social media advertising is something that you should even bother with, right? So the first tip that we can give all the business owners and, and, and all the professionals on this call is first of all, to determine whether you should even be worried about social media or even be using it as a tool to promote. Um, you know, many people come to us and say, should I be using Facebook ads, Instagram ads? Should I be doing Google? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? And honestly, it's not always the same for, for every business. Not everybody should be bothering with social media ads. So the first thing that I always ask is, what are you ultimately trying to accomplish? Um, you know, what is your primary objective? Are you trying to gain new customers? Are you trying to gain more reach? You just want more branding? Do you want more messages? You know, what are the actual objectives that you're trying to achieve? And then how are you going to measure it? Um, 
you know, what's going to look like success to you. Usually when we start to onboard with a client, we really write down very specifically what will be, what will be your success criteria. Um, do you want to see more sales from this? Do you want to see more page likes? Do you want to see more engagement? Will you feel that if you're getting a lot of comments and likes and shares, that is successful? Ultimately, you know, what are you basically trying to get from your social media ad dollar? Um, who are you going after? Is your target audience in social media? And when they're using social media, are they in the right mindset to be able to make your ads make sense? Um, you know, one example that I always use of somebody that we that that probably doesn't need to be buying social media ads is like uh, is is a locksmith. Okay, so a locksmith has a very specific uh, fulfills a very specific need, right? I'm locked out of my house. I need to call somebody to let me back into my house. It is, it would be a questionable strategy for a locksmith to be advertising in social media because they can't really create a need for their product. They simply need to be there when that need already exists. So social media ads kind of don't work for that person. Um, so you really kind of have to understand who your buyer is, what your offer is and exactly who you're targeting before you can really even, you know, before you can really even start thinking about whether social media ads are a good thing for you. Um, I'm going to skip down to do you, do you have time to make a social media ad investment actually make sense? Because like many other things, it takes time to see results from something like this. Um, while you could place an ad and immediately get phone calls or immediately get messages and so on, more often than not, we find that these kinds of ads actually require some time and some seasoning so that Facebook and Instagram their systems can learn how to best serve you, the advertiser. So you might post an ad and just think that you're just going after the people that you've chosen to target. But in the background, Facebook is actually making a decision and a bunch of little micro decisions on who the right people are for you to target. And it doesn't happen until you know later on down the road that it has enough data to be able to really make the best decisions possible. So you got to give these things the right amount of time. Um, you know, staff and resources. If we set up an ad for you, or if you set up an ad for yourself, and you get a bunch of emails and phone calls, um, and messages and comments, can you handle them? You know, are you able to get out like if you're a painting company, right? Are you able to get down climb down off of the ladder to, to answer that message that just came through? Or is that actually not a great way for people to communicate with you? Um, so you really need to sort of figure all those things out before you decide whether social media ads are even something you should be bothering with. Um, second, you got to have a good offer. So we'll talk a little bit more about what a good offer looks like, but keep in mind that when we're doing a social media ad for somebody, and this is not the same thing as just organic social media content where you're posting just to sort of maintain a presence. And so that when people come to your page, they see that you're relevant and you're keeping things updated. The purpose of an ad, honestly, is to take the person from the platform that they're on, which is Facebook or Instagram, and put them somewhere else, whether it be in a phone call with you, whether it be in a message with you, whether it be on your website. So you need to have an offer that actually entices them and inspires them to, to do that. Right. So an offer could be download this piece of content and become part of our email list or um, call us right now and get on our schedule for next week. You know, we're booking appointments next week for maybe you own a hair salon. Um, uh, maybe you are uh, an admissions counselor at a local college or university. And the call to action is, you know, download our free information guide and we can have a representative reach out to you right away with with more information if you're interested. Right. So there just needs to be an offer and something to inspire people to take action included in your ads. And we'll get into that a little bit later, a little bit more detail. Um, number three, you need to define what your objective is actually going to be. So Facebook gives you an Instagram. They give you all these different things that you can actually achieve using the platform. You can generate traffic to your website, you can generate leads, messages, anything, just regular engagement. You know, if you're just looking for likes, shares, comments on your posts, um, you can choose the engagement objective. Ultimately, you have to figure out what your objective ought to be before you can actually start running your campaign. That's why it's number one. It's the first thing you have to do 
when you set up a campaign. And uh, hopefully we will have time to do that in, in a little bit. We, we actually have something kind of fun to plan where I'm gonna show you that we've actually built out a campaign and I'll show you step-by-step step exactly what we did um, and, and what we chose as a, uh, and what we chose as an objective. Um, here are just a few examples of ads that we have run where there are actual offers being promoted in the ads and the, and the CTA, um, the call to action, right? So on the left-hand side here, I've got Southers Construction. That is a local roofing and siding company. Very, very good company, by the way, um, longtime client of ours. And essentially what we're looking to do for them is grow their email list. Um, so we're giving people the ability to download a piece of content that would be inspirational and give them, uh, and give them the ability to essentially join that email list. Um, in the second ad here, what we have is LaPlante Electric up in Maine. And they are looking to increase their generator business, the number of people that buy standby generators from them. Um, and the beauty of this ad is that it gives people the ability, number one, to call them, which you have to be careful with Facebook ads and Instagram ads because they can't actually click that phone number, keep in mind. Um, but they can also click to a website. They can also send a message. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can actually be contacted using an ad like this. And the offer is compelling. Um, and the creative is compelling. The image stops you in your tracks because you almost think that there's a storm coming at you. Um, and it speaks very, very clearly to what the offer is, which is the $99 a month generator. Don't let this scare you this year. No need to be afraid of storms. You won't lose power. Um, and then on the right-hand side here, we actually created a piece of content for Top Notch Inn, which is one of our, uh, one of our clients up in Northern New Hampshire. Their primary market is people who are looking to, um, who, who are looking for four-wheeling uh, and snowmobiling. So the goal here is find people that are in your primary market by giving them a lead magnet, which is a, a, a trail map, a North Country trail map. This has been incredibly successful for them. They're adding new people to their email address list, like for a dollar, a dollar fifty piece, a piece. Um, so this is a this is a pretty cool ad for them. Um, Kate, you're unmuting. So does that mean you have there's a there's a question? Yes, yes, we have two questions. So the okay. first question, um, someone asked about the shop now button and asked if we if if you don't have a product to to advertise, would you use Facebook ads? And so I I, did, I said yes, and I thought that right this slide is actually a very good example of other calls to action that you can utilize for this. Right. Yeah. Because even if you don't have an actual product to sell right now, um, you can absolutely, there's a lot of different ways that you can use Facebook ads. I think that um, specifically you can get people into your email list so that they will then buy from you in, in the future. Or, um, you know, just getting them to interact with your ads puts them into what's called a custom audience, which means that you can retarget them later on down the road. So yeah, there's a lot of different reasons to, to do it. And then yep. the second question from James, um, is there a rule of thumb when using Facebook ads? Is it always worth paying the higher premium to engage with your ideal target demographic or is it generally as profitable or successful to target a broad audience with Facebook ads? Um, that's a great question. So first of all, your, so your, your audience has to be broad enough so that Facebook can find the right people. So like if you're, if you're targeting an audience of only a thousand people or 2000 people, like your local business, you're going to have a very, very hard time getting any reach at all. Um, and those people that you do reach are going to end up with a frequency of like 10, 12, 15. You're really going to end up turning people off. Um, so you don't really want that. But at the same time, you don't want to target so broad an audience that you have people seeing your ads that are definitely not a good fit for them. You know, for instance, we're going to be talking um, in, in a little while, we're going to be talking about um, Greg's business, which is on the run pet care services. And in that case, we're targeting dog owners, right? I mean, we're not, we don't want to be targeting people that don't own dogs, really, because doing so would be a waste of money. And it would also be a waste of that person's time that's seeing your ad. Like, why am I seeing this ad? I don't own a dog. Um, so you have to be very careful um, with, with how much of that you actually do. You don't want to go too broad with it, but you also don't want to be too honed in either because you won't give the algorithm anything to actually work with. So I hope that answer didn't sound evasive, but the answer is there really is no perfect 100% right answer. 
Um, you just have to be strategic in how you go about it. Um, if you're running a nationwide campaign though, because you asked for a rule of thumb, if you're running a nationwide campaign, you want to try and make sure that your audience is at least a million people. Um, is usually the way that I like to keep it, 800,000 to a million people. Usually gives Facebook the ability to hone in on the perfect market that will take the action that you really want them to take, which might be purchasing a product or whatever the case is. Um, were there others, Kate, or is that, is that it? That was it. Okay. All right. Perfect segue, right? We have to get into who is your actual target market. You've got to be able to target your people appropriately. So where are they spending their time? Um, how are they going to react? What's going to actually get their attention? What kinds of things are important to them? Um, and also, what problem can you actually solve for your target market? I mean, nobody needs to be sold anything. Nobody woke up today and said, I'm sh sure I'm hoping that, I've, that, that somebody sells me something. Nobody cares about that, right? But we did all wake up with problems that we either don't know we have or we, we, we know we have them. Um, and so if you can solve a problem for somebody through your advertising or give them a way to solve a problem through your advertising, it's, it's really the single most effective way to cut through all the other noise that people always see. So here's an idea of what the targeting actually looks like. Um, so one thing to keep in mind with Facebook and social media ads overall is that there are something like 5 million different ways and, 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 and data points that social media has on all of us. I mean, we're, anybody that's seen The Social Dilemma knows uh, on, on Netflix that, that we're being targeted and we're being tracked every single moment. <laughs> Everything that we do online is being tracked. Um, love it or hate it, it is what it is. So we figure we might as well help our clients use it to their advantage, right? So um, these are the different ways that you can target your demographic, right? So you can target them based on their location, um, based on age, based on gender, based on interests. So do they own the dog? Are they parents? Do they buy a lot of things online? You know, do they spend a lot of time reading blogs? Do they lean left or lean right? Um, you know, do they, do they read a lot of books? There's just, a, there's so many different ways that you can reach your target audience. And the magic all kind of happens right down here in the bottom in the detailed targeting end. Um, but if you're looking to just basically reach a wide audience, um, you know, for instance, we run ads for a, uh, for a local company in Manchester. Um, and it's a, it's a fitness organization. It's a nonprofit organization called Game Plan Sports. And basically what they do is they almost for free give away strength training to, to kids that are, I wanna say in, in, in middle school. Um, so that's a pretty basic audience, right? You're targeting parents whose kids are between the ages of nine and, and 12 or nine and 14 years old, everybody. Um, on the other hand, we have e-commerce brands where they're selling consumer products and literally anybody could buy these products. Anybody that drives a car, you know, or, you know, anybody that is a parent. So that way, you know, and in that way, we're, we're really kind of reaching a much more broad audience. Um, but this is what the interface looks like where you can choose your targeting. Here's some examples of how to actually target your audience through your ad copy. So back, you know, on that last slide, we're talking about how to actually choose who sees your ad. On this slide, what we're talking about is how to actually call your audience out so they know they're in the right place and they know that you're actually speaking to them. So on the left-hand side here, this is an ad for a company called Super Potty Trainer. This company makes a product called the Super Potty Trainer that is specifically designed for parents whose children are having a hard time potty training, right? Um, so the ad copy is speaking directly to that person. The image or the video that you're seeing here is speaking directly to that person. It's talking to the mom who's having a hard time potty training her, her child. In the middle here, this is an ad that we're running specifically for takeout guys. It's one of our longtime clients right in Dover um, where we're advertising just Dover restaurants and we're calling out just people that live in Dover, New Hampshire. And on the right-hand side here with Health Candy Nutrition, um, we're trying to build an audience just at UT Dallas. So we have a very specific pin that's in the middle of UT Dallas and exclusionary pins all around it because we only want people at this particular university to be seeing this ad. 
and we're calling them out directly in the ad copy. It's a pretty effective way to make sure people feel that your ad is speaking to them. Kate, did you have another, I noticed that you came off mute for a second there. Is there another one? Yeah, um, we have a few people wondering if Facebook ads make sense if they are looking to target people who are in a location today, like as of right now, instead of um, Facebook just utilizing your profile data um, to like say whether you live or work there. They want kind of like real time targeting. Yep. So there's actually, so yes, absolutely. Um, and there's, there's some really interesting ways of going about that. First of all, Facebook does have targeting parameters that say things like recently visited such and such an area or frequent travelers and, and so on. But let's just say you own a restaurant and you know, if somebody is within four or five miles of your restaurant and they're at CVS across the street and they open up the, they open up their Facebook app while they're waiting on a prescription, you want to make sure that that person sees your ad because of the proximity to your restaurant. Um, very, very effective way to target. Let's say that you are a car dealership and you want to target people that are at a competitive car dealership who may be searching for a car. You can do that too. It's called geofencing. Um, and it's some pretty next level stuff, but yeah, you can, you can pretty much do anything you want with this. We, uh, for instance, with, um, with some of our local advertisers before we've targeted just people that work in the Liberty Mutual building. Um, and offered a specific deal just for the people that work at Liberty Mutual um, and, a, and a promo code for them uh, just because we wanted to test it and see if it worked. And as it turns out, it did. It's a big enough area and there's enough people in that audience that a lot of people saw it. A lot of people took advantage of it. So yes, you could totally target people based on where they actually are. Okay, next we're gonna talk about creating an actual engaging experience. Um, you want, when people are scrolling through their feed, right? you basically want for people to stop what they're doing and look at your ad. And uh, you know, we, we call it, does your ad have thumb stopping power? Because that's kind of what's happening. Um, you, want to take, you want to take them away from whatever else they're doing and have them go, wow, that, that looks amazing, right? So there's a few different ways that we can do that. Facebook allows you to do a carousel ad, which is multiple images and multiple headlines. You could do one single image. You could do a video. Um, there, there's a lot of ways that you can. There's a lot of ways that you can go about this. Uh, here are some specific ads that we've run for clients locally, who, uh, which, in in our opinions, and I think in in the beholders' opinions, really work quite well. Um, so this is Taylor Made Kitchens and Bath. This is a kitchen and bath retailer, and you know we were scrolling through some of the ads that we've run, and Kate said, "Check this one out," and. and when I saw this, I'm like, that's, that is definitely a nice ad. I mean, that is a beautiful looking bathroom. And to anybody that's in the market for re, you know, remodeling their bathroom or remodeling their kitchen and so on and so forth, they may look at that and go, wow, that's a beautiful front image. But we don't want them just to look at the front image. The reason that there are multiple images here is that we want to compel people to press the front image and flip through all of the pictures. Um, that, that's, that's kind of where we're, I don't want to say, I don't want to say we're gaming the algorithm, but basically if you have a, if you have an ad where people are engaging with it at a very high rate, Facebook knows that, and they'll show your ad to more people for less money. So if we give them multiple images and, and, and multiple things to sort of consume on the same ad, then we're more likely to get more engagement for less money. Um, and just create a better experience, get more messages, get more leads and so on. The middle ad here is for takeout guys. We do this once a year with takeout guys. This is a lot of fun, right? So what they do is they basically just say, listen, tag somebody that you know of who has a child who might like this car. And it's funny because it's a Lamborghini and it's a food delivery service. So there's this, you know, there's this hook about maybe they can drive it around and deliver food someday. And, and it's funny. Um, but really what this does is it stops the thumb because people see this orange Lamborghini with the cart, with the, with the doors up, and then they read about it. Um, and, you know, as you can see, 445 comments, 83 shares. And, and it's not like we spent a ton of money promoting this. Um, we did the same thing last year with a Jeep, and I don't know what we'll do this year. Um, but that's a pretty effective one, and that has worked out very well. That gives them a lot of brand recognition. And then this third one over here uh, with New Outlook Landscaping, we're not using multiple images, 
but the image sort of takes your breath away. You don't see a lot of staircase. You don't see a lot of front staircases like that. Um, it, number one, it's beautifully done and it shows off that these guys know what they're doing. Number two, it's different. It, it's not a normal thing that you see. So it, it stops the thumb and that's generating a good amount of business for them. So, um, you know, these are just some examples of how to use visuals to, to, to really get that extra level of engagement. Um, okay. And the number six, tip number six is all about being clear, you know, being clear about what you want people to do. Uh, understand that most people are going to be viewing your ads on a mobile device. So if you have something to say, try to say it in the first three lines because they probably won't see the rest of the copy unless the first three lines are compelling enough to get them to actually read the rest of the copy, right? So try to make it uh, so that at least the first few lines are short and sweet. And you got to give people a direction, you know, you got to let people know what to do. If people don't know what to do, to do then they get scared and they go away, <laughs> you know, they go do something else. Like, I just can't figure this out. I'm annoyed by this. And then they move on. Um, so, so try to be as clear as possible. So here's a few examples. On the left-hand side here, this is back to LaPlante Electric. LaPlante got into the heat pump business. And I'm not sure if anybody in this call knows what a heat pump is. Probably some people do. Um, basically, these heat pumps, you hang them on the wall and they blow air into your room like a air conditioner and like a heater, right? But I, I, I looked at all the content that, that their supplier was, was providing us with and it was all this technical jargon and all this stuff. And, and I was telling my wife about heat pumps and how we should have them. And I showed her one of the videos that, that Mitsubishi produced and, she's, and she watches the five minute video. She's like, I don't understand what I'm even, what is this? What, what am I looking at right now? So I was like, all right. Um, and then I went back to my marketing class from UNH and essentially the, 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 the goal of any marketing is that it needs to be simple enough for a five-year-old to understand what it is that you're talking about. I happen to have a five-year-old. So I ran a script with her and, and this is her little caricature here. And this is me and looks nothing like me, but that's okay. Um, and it's basically like her asking, Hey, what's a heat pump and explaining it to a five-year-old. And then bang in the $69 ad, it, it just generates a lot of action, right? And these guys are getting a lot of leads from this inbound messages, inbound leads. We're using this video in a lot of different ways, but just make it simple. And also understand that the first part here has the main offer because we know there's a lot of people that aren't going to read the rest. They're going to watch the video and they may still not know what they're looking at. Um, in the middle, okay, we got a problem here. Junior's falling into the toilet. Right? When, when we're trying to potty train and there's no faster way to make sure that your child won't want to potty train anymore than if they actually fall in that creates a very scary experience. Um, so that's what super potty trainer does is it makes sure that your child doesn't fall into the potty, which addresses that problem. Um, but again, the big blue eyes, the big, the big words, the child <laughs> having fallen into the potty captures your attention. Most of the time when I show that to people, they go, oh, that's cute. Or it just evokes some type of a reaction, which is what you want. Henzo Gracie NH is another client of ours and they're fantastic. They're doing amazing things for children. Um, and again, this is an ad about bringing your whole family to jujitsu, having it be a fun family activity. Now, Obviously, things have changed a bit in the past six months, right? With this, uh, notice the date. Um, but they're, you know, they're back to being they're back to being able to do a lot of what they were doing before on, in a very socially distanced way and with family. Um, but again, we're showing pictures of families because that's who we're, that's basically who we're targeting. Now, here's some examples of things not to do. So, take a look at this ad on the left. Now, I saw this ad on the left and immediately became enraged because I couldn't figure out what was even going on in the ad. It's like, what are you selling me? Are you selling me road signs? Are you selling me, are you selling me caution tape? What are you telling me about? And then I read the headline and it says, now is time to get your wrap. And I'm still confused. I'm going, what is, what wrap? Like, are we talking about wrapping paper? Are we talking about, uh, is this an ad for Chipotle? Is this some new advertising campaign? What are we, what are we doing here? Um, as it turns out, Kate picked right up on it after like 10 seconds. She's like, it's for vehicle wraps, but that's still a terrible ad. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, it is. 
at least in our opinion, I don't know. There could be some really, really intelligent people that are like, yeah, but you're showing it in a webinar right now, which means it was effective. I don't know. Um, but this doesn't meet, meet my expectations for what a good ad is. It's not clear. It doesn't have a real good call to action. It doesn't even tell me what I'm looking at. And it's too texty. So Facebook will take an ad like this with this much text in the image, and they probably won't even show it to a lot of people because they don't like that much text. Um, and then on the right hand side here, there's just, you know, there, there's just kind of issues with this all over the place. I don't understand what the, first of all, there's no call to action. I can't click that phone number. I click, can't click the email address. It doesn't really give me a lot of, um, it doesn't give me a lot of context. I don't understand why the plug, what the plug has to do with home advisor. Uh, you know, it's just the whole thing. And you got to keep in mind, you've got three seconds to, to get someone's attention. Um, and if they have to think too much about what's even happening, then you've, you're gonna lose them. So we try to make sure that with our ads, people don't actually have to think too much. Plus, I don't think they're running any ad spend behind this. I think it's just posted on their page. So they're kind of speaking to an empty room, which you know, getting back to the original point is kind of a frustrating way to go about it. Um, okay, so as a recap, first thing we need to do is figure out if social media advertising is even right for our business at all, because it might not be. Um, a good rule of thumb is if your business, if, if your product or service can create excitement or can create a need, then social media ads may be a great platform for you. Um, but if your product or service requires the need to already be there, and if that need is instantaneous, then there's a good chance that it is not a great platform for you. Again, case in point, we'll go back to LaPlante Electric. That's, that's our electrician. Um, they probably shouldn't be selling normal electrical services on social media because when I have an electrical issue, I'm not going to social media, but I may buy from you a generator or a heat pump if I see a great ad for it and a great offer and great copy. So that's a better thing for them to be promoting. Good offer, good clear call to action. Define your goals. Uh, figure out exactly what success is going to look like before you start spending money. Right? I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody, somebody gave me a quote the other day. It was like, opinions are free, but decisions cost money. So figure out what your decision process is going to be for what success looks like and then start spending money, then back into how you're actually going to invest in that objective or in that outcome, not the other way around. Um, I see too many people that just say, yeah, I throw 20 bucks at this thing, or I boost this post for 30 bucks. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but there's no real strategy behind it. We try to avoid having that happen. Um, understand your audience, you know, understand what their pain points are um, and whether or not they can even be targeted in social media. And then definitely use the right visuals, you know, use the right ads, use the right copy and, and the right images. So what I want to do, first of all, are there any questions that are, that are hanging out out there that we should, that we should answer before we actually show one of these campaigns live? Kate? Um, one of the last ones. Someone asked if Facebook does allow geofencing in real time. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about how you set up the targeting. It's all about how you set up the, the, the geographic targeting. Um, so if you are, if you're showing up for somebody when they're in a particular location, it's because you've decided I want to show up for these people in this location when they're there while they're using you know, while they're using Facebook. Um, so yes, it works pretty well. We're doing it with, for a couple, for a couple clients actually. Were there any others? Nope. That's all. Let's build. All right. Perfect. So I will tell you that I was going to just build this on the fly with everybody on the, on the call. I think better judgment sort of prevailed. And I realized how long these often take, especially if Facebook's just being slow on any particular day, which does tend to happen often. Um, so I built the campaign ahead of time, but I'm still going to kind of walk you through what exactly we did. So let's talk about our 
company here. Let's talk about the company that we're doing this for. It is On The Run NH. This is On The Run Pet Care Services. Good friend of mine named Greg Kasapis, who just so happens to be on this call, um, recently started a pet care service for people in the Manchester area. Um, primarily dogs, right? People that need to have somebody watch their dogs when they go away or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so we are trying to target people who own dogs and have a reason to call a pet care service every now and then, right? So what I've done here is I've created the campaign in the Facebook ads manager. And I, first of all, and this kind of gets into you know some some level of detail, and I'm going to gloss over a lot of things. But for the purposes of just kind of talking about why you do these things, always have a proper naming convention because I want to know exactly what this campaign is. And if you get into a point like if if any of you guys want to do this on your own and you have 15 campaigns running at once, you don't want to just be sitting there looking at campaign one, campaign two, campaign three. You'll drive yourself crazy. So name your campaign something that's going to be meaningful to you. Um, so here we go. I'm going to get into it right now. What I've done is I've essentially set this campaign up to generate inbound messages. I could have just set it up for engagement. I could have just gone for reach where I'm just trying to reach as many people as possible. But what I'm trying to do is optimize for messages because I happen to know that the person that owns this company and be fielding these messages is a pretty good writer, is pretty engaging, and is probably going to be able to close a lot more business if they're coming in as an inbound message as opposed to just receiving a lead or seeing a you know a comment or something like that. So that's my objective. I can choose any objective I want. In this case, I chose objective. I mean, I'm sorry, I chose messages. So there's two different types of people that we're going to target with this advertising. Um, and I just kind of came up with these out of the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, you could you could target whoever you want. Um, but the first, the first audience that I wanted to target are dog owners who live within 20 miles of Manchester, New Hampshire, as you can see right here, who also are frequent, frequent travelers. And I, I, uh, considered not doing that because I didn't want to have to say that in front of 35 people and stumble over my words, but I did. And, uh, so here we go. So here's what this allows you to do. So I know that anybody that does a lot of looking up dog collars and dog food and dog harnesses and, and dog toys and things like that, anybody that exhibits these types of traits and characteristics as they're going through their online life, probably they own a dog. Not 100% of the time, but probably. It's a good assumption that they own a dog. Um, now, the fact that I may catch people that, well, they don't own a dog. They're just buying dog food or researching dog food for their friend, Shelly, who owns a dog. That's possible, but we can't, we can't plan for everything, right? So these are the five main things that I'm targeting here. People that have these types of online characteristics, they, they, they behave in this way. Um, but just because somebody owns a dog doesn't mean that they're necessarily a good prospect for a pet care services facility. Uh, or, or business service, right? So are they a frequent traveler? Do they leave the country often? Or do they need to go places sometimes where they can't bring their dog? Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this, but I'm choosing this as one audience, right? Now, some may argue, yeah, but th these people bring their dogs everywhere. That, that may be true. We may have a different audience for people that bring their dogs everywhere, right? But in this case, we're just targeting people that own dogs and travel a lot and maybe would prefer to leave their dog with a trustworthy person that can take very, very good care of them, that could take very, very good care of their dog. Um, and then the next audience would be parents with young children. So parents with young children who also own dogs because parents with young children may not want the level of complexity that comes along with going on a long trip and also bringing a dog. They also may not have the room in their car. There could be a lot of different reasons. Um, or they might be going to work and needing to leave their dog somewhere while their child goes to childcare. There's a lot of different reasons for this. So these are two different audiences that we've, that we've sort of chosen uh, for, this, for this purpose. Um, now I actually wrote ad copy for this and here we go. So let's start with the dog owners that travel. I've written two different ads for the dog owners that travel. The first one is what's called a carousel ad. 
one of the reasons that just so you know, not only do I like Greg a lot, but Greg's business is an absolute love story for Facebook ads for a lot of reasons. Number one, the audience is very easily targeted. Number two, people love dogs. Dogs have more thumb stopping power than anything ever that I've ever seen. My mother, uh, her name is Mary Doan. She built a whole dog rescue called Mary's Dogs specifically by just doing organic posting on Facebook. And the, the following was amazing. Um, dogs stop the thumb. So that's another one of the reasons that we're, that we're using this particular business to demonstrate this. Um, so here is a carousel ad. I've chosen three different images that we can, that, that Facebook will choose which one is the right one or which one is the best one to show first based on people's relative engagement. And here's my ad copy, Manchester area dog lovers. We have something now, today, starting now or new called the dog owner concierge program. So you give people sort of, an, you know, you give somebody something that makes them feel like they're in the right place at the right time. Um, give them a quick call to action, send us a message. This is specifically made for frequent travelers, right? We're speaking directly to our audience that we're targeting. Same thing here, except that this one's a little bit different. This image also has stopping power. This somebody's face, right? A, a, a strapping, good looking guy like Greg, right? Is gonna stop people in their tracks, especially because he's pointing to the hat. They're gonna look at it and go, what is that? right? When you see somebody pointing to something, your immediate reaction is to go, what is that? And that's what we want. We want people to engage. So we are posing a problem. You're heading out of town and you want somebody reliable to take care of your dog. That's the question. The payoff is we will take very good care of your dog, just like we would take care of our own. Here's your headline. Frequent travelers save 10% through the end of 2020. Bang. Greg gets a message about that particular ad. So those are two examples of how you may target that audience. Now, my, my targeting and my ad copy would be different to the parents because I know that they may have a different pain point, right? You wanna go, you wanna take a trip away with your family every now and then. Um, you know, maybe they have guilt because they can't. I, I know a lot of people that can't leave their house or they can't leave for a long time because they have a dog and they still want to be able to have their dog well taken care of, but they also want to be able to go and do things and have a life outside of their dog. Um, so the goal here is essentially to help them understand that you don't have to choose. Um, headline, save 10% through November 10th. Don't worry, Greg, it doesn't have to be that way. I just made it up. <laughs> You know, just coming up with something. And honestly, that's not necessarily the greatest call to action. That's not the greatest offer. As a matter of fact, I tend to like offers that are more tangible, like save $10 on your first visit or, you know, pay only $29 per month because that's something tangible. Whereas somebody may not really know what 10% actually represents in terms of real dollar value. Um, so, the point here is that you would want to test all these different offers and test different creative and see which one resonates and which one works best with your audience. Um, one thing I do know is that we don't really know much until we test it. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we have experience. We all have experience with what we know how to do, but the best way to figure out what's going to work best is for you to put it out there to the court of public opinion and let them tell you and vote with their actions, you know, what the, what the best copy is and what the best image is. So this is a little bit of a peek under the hood. Um, any, any questions in the chat at this point? Yep. So Renee just asked, what if you want to target other businesses, not consumers to engage with your ad? How do you target other businesses B2B on Instagram? Okay. So um, targeting other business. So Facebook and Instagram are highly, um, they're highly personal, right? So you may not target other businesses, but you would probably want to target the owners of those businesses. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to target builders, let's just say, you know, we have one client who owns a, um, who owns a, uh, Apple, uh, Precision Applications Spray Foam Insulation is the business. So he sells spray foam insulation. His target audience is builders. 
because in order to apply spray foam insulation, you kind of need to get in there before the house is built, right? So that's a really important audience for him. So how do you target builders? Well, first thing you could do is you could target anybody that reads the trade magazines that builders read. Um, you could target anybody that visits the website the, or the websites, the group of websites that builders uh, visit. Uh, you can also upload something that's called a custom audience, where if you have a big, long email list of people who are already your customers, and maybe they are all builders, you can upload it to Facebook and target those people specifically. So say that list has a thousand people on it. You could target those thousand people, just those thousand people using Facebook ads and using Instagram ads. Beyond that, and this is something that we'll probably talk more about in next week's uh, webinar, you can also create something that's called a lookalike audience. And a lookalike audience is really where the magic happens because remember what I said about being able to upload those thousand business owners? A lookalike audience will take the commonalities between those thousand people the common traits between those thousand people and Facebook is smart enough to know that in this case, they're all builders and they'll find other people that look like them who exhibit similar characteristics in their browsing behavior, in their commenting that exhibit similar characteristics to the original list. And now you're getting people that Facebook is saying these people are much like that original list. So they're probably good target markets for you. And we found very, very good success with that. We actually find better success with lookalike audiences than we do with their regular targeting parameters. It's pretty wild what Facebook knows about people. So uh, I hope that answered your question. Um, there's a lot of di there's a lot of different ways there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, but those are those are a couple quick ones. Another question uh, from Lauren is: Can you talk a little bit about Instagram advertising? Sure. So Instagram advertising is very, very similar to Facebook advertising. As a matter of fact, Instagram advertising um, is done through basically the same ads management platform as, as, as the Facebook ads. Uh, the only difference being that with Instagram, they have, different, um, they have different parameters, like different parameters for the sizing of the ads, different parameters for how long videos can be. Um, there's also a different nuances, like the fact that a link to a website will not be clickable in the ad copy on Instagram. So if you want to link people to your website, you have to advertise and you have to add a learn more button, um, you know, with a link back to your website. Um, but yeah, Instagram is basically done through the ads manager. I, I have found Instagram to be slightly more expensive than Facebook advertising, because I think that Instagram holds its people, its, its advertisers to sort of a higher standard than, than Facebook does. Um, you can get away with things on Facebook that you really can't get away with Instagram on. And I think that, that's, that kind of speaks to the quality of the platforms and it sort of speaks to why so many people are adopting Instagram as sort of their preferred social media platform. Um, and also in a later in a later webinar, we should also look at maybe um, exploring some of the other ad platforms. So LinkedIn, for instance, a year ago, I probably wouldn't have even cared too much about LinkedIn advertising, but what they're doing is making business to business advertising way more effective. So Renee, to your question, if you're trying to target businesses or target business owners or people in specific job titles, LinkedIn ads, while about eight to 10 times more expensive than Facebook ads on average, can be super effective. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, a, there's definitely a lot out there. Okay, and then uh, the last question that just came in, I often see on Instagram businesses saying to share with a friend, if the friend likes the page, then you get something. Do you like mm -hmm. those? And they seem too much for me. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta be honest. I'm not. I'm not into. So, okay. I think I there's a slippery. I think there's a slippery slope here. Um, I'm fine with. I'm fine with um, giving somebody something if they like or comment or share or or whatever the case. You know, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think you have to be very, very careful. It's easy for a business to come off like they are only self-interested and they're not actually interested in, in, in growing a community. Case in point, if we were to go back to that takeout guys ad, 
where we gave away the little orange car. So that ad was so effective and is so effective because all we're doing is saying, just tag somebody who may like this car. That's it. There's no, here's the rules. You have to like our page, share the post, comment on the post, you know, do, do 17 different things and then you will be entered to win this car. It's like, that would kill the whole thing because people don't, number one, they don't want to do that. Um, number two, it just, it just feels like, uh, all right. So now we're pulling on people's heartstrings in order to get them to like and share our page. It just doesn't, it just doesn't mean anything to people anymore. But when you make it more organic in nature, I think you get a lot more out of that. And I mean, you know, still 20,000 people see takeout guys and see them giving something away. So it's not like they lose the, so the goodwill of the whole thing. Um, the other side is that if you're, if you're asking people to share in order to get something in return, Facebook is sort of cracking down on that kind of stuff. They don't like that anymore. Same thing with Instagram. And although businesses still do it, what you used to be able to get for organic reach out of something like that, you, you really can no longer get anymore because frankly, Facebook and Instagram don't really want people behaving in that way on the platform. So not a huge fan of it. I'd rather find other ways to get people to follow your page or like your page. And there's plenty of other ways to do it. Brad, it's been, uh, we, we need to wrap it up because we're right at one o'clock and uh, um, well, our Zoom platform scheduled for another one at one o'clock. So, uh, but if there's anything um, you wanted to preview for, for next week quick, um, yep. I just wanted to, before you do that, because we'll probably um, end the session immediately after that. Thank you and Caitlin mm -hmm. for your time today and thank everybody else for hanging out and spending time with us uh, sure. and uh, check out the rest of the mammoth marketing series yeah next week we're going to be back doing the same you know same time same place we're going to just delve in a little bit deeper so we're going to talk about the metrics that you should be using to evaluate whether your campaigns are actually performing well um so like i'm spending money am i making money back um we'll talk about driving social proof on your posts um evaluating overall success we'll talk about how to um I don't want to say spy on your competitors, but we'll talk about how to ethically find out what your competitors are doing and how you can use that to your advantage as well. Um, and then we'll also talk just about sort of building your email list and your overall social following. Um, and if any of this has been uh, helpful to you and anybody on the call wants to just have a quick consultation about what you're doing on social media, we're more than happy to provide that 100% free, of course, um, and, and uh, you know, kind of give you our thoughts. So thank you guys very much for, for joining. We hope to see everybody next week. All right. Thank you. Both you All right. Have a good one. Appreciate it, everyone. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.